I know you did this before I'm nervous, but shit, you did a good damn job. So hey, encouragement's always good, right? So the next one, point is Lonnie, Lainey, I'm oh, sorry, boo. So get it up with Ah, ah, hold up, hold up, shit, hold up, no, stop that. I swear to God I said no, no clapping. Did I just say that? Soon I call her name, she said, woo, woo, woo. We know you a supporter. I thought you gonna stand up and all. I mean, that's, that's okay. True supporter, she got your back 100%. Don't worry about that shit. Trust. Let's do this again. I'm gonna be watching you. Lainey, right? Yeah, Lainey. Okay, got that. All right. Everybody, let's snap. Flame.
does not want to try anymore. I'm just tired of striving towards an unattainable goal for some time. Just one day, anyone can go. But I already gave up.
tomorrow, when he wakes you up, you start acting like the first time in your entire life. You finally, you understand. Until then, I'll be the good guy that's getting you high. Here we go. All right. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm just an intermission, y'all. I'm a singer. I'm a, I'm a, really, I'm a singer. I do like singing this song right now. Just do it as, you know, she daily asked me, and I was like, okay, now. Yeah. Follow me, I make soul music. He said, I'm promoting shit. I'm a singer, but I'm a promote. I'm a comedian. This is the place to talk about promote. All right, all right. So we got some more poets out here. We have Samuel. Oh, he looked at me like, what the? Woo! He, he, he used to say he looked at me. He was like, together? Yeah. Okay, Samuel and Jada. Oh, y'all gonna do this in a different. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, sit, sit, sit back down for a second, sweetheart. Jada, sit back down for a second. Today, they wrong for this. We're gonna do this again. Samuel and Jada, snap! Yes. Let's go. No, no, my, oh, no, <laughs> Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. I done heard it all before. You people black as dirt, black as shit, black as coal. But that's the same black that put this nation on the map. Talking about the land of the free built on my back, I should make them get on their knees and pledge allegiance to me. Cause see, I already earned my stripes and the way I'm feeling, they gon' really be seeing stars. Like I don't know pain, when my daddy fought for the same country that'll put him in his grave, and then laugh in my face. Cause I'd be just another black girl without a father. See, I've been called a thug who would kill for the right price, like crooked cops on my block blaming us for they drive-bys. I should live up to the name and really make a Karen clutch her purse when I walk by. Cause I'm a criminal, right? I'm the suspect. When white people invade my property and then they upset. They said Obama had to go like he's the problem. When Trump got a peach twice, ain't it nice to see his people cause a riot in DC comfortably, climbing walls built to keep out people like me. How ironic. And don't tell me shit's platonic, that I got black friends bullshit. Cause when we down, you ain't around, you go to protest cause it's popular. 
because you don't really feel that, do you? Because we've been tired. This topic's been expired, but I've been dying to speak on it. Because it's so funny how everybody cool with the Haitians now. Hmm. Pure comedy, honestly. Because if I recall correctly, they're the same ones that acted like we didn't belong here. As if we were wrong for trying to do better for ourselves. We was all wrong. It took a fucking earthquake before they decided to focus on what we got going on. Then they had the nerve to give us some recycled song, sloppy second, sing along, oh so. So now we are the world. Oh so, so first Africa, now Haiti, huh? No, you good, we don't want it. Stop it. They find any way to turn our catastrophes into their profit. Took the same catastrophe just for them to know that we exist. I didn't forget, because I still remember how much that song made me upset. They still haven't addressed where that money went. $68 million spent, Haiti still has yet to get a red cent. They were so eager to hear Haiti cry out for help, but immediately turned deaf when they saw that first check. Then left us a rewritten song through and white cleft, called it relief and expected us to accept it. I didn't forget it. Our Independence Day is the first day of the year and they've been trying to make us regret it. Just like they made the world forget that we actually free. Like we some sort of third world country. Like we ain't got nothing. No products, no food, no forces. Yeah, they came stole most of our resources like we still slaves. I bet that Selena's turning over in his grave to see how great it's gotten for us. We the first country historically to be black, beautiful, free. Now they acting like we some sort of lawless playground for kidnappers, rapists, thieves, being crippled by our own democracy. I think Jim Crow would like to have a word. I heard my voice makes them sick because that actually makes sense. And don't tell me you don't understand when you treat I can't breathe like a lullaby for white babies. And maybe it sounds crazy, but in reality, these white men love to be on their knees, sucking the life from my people without an ounce of regret. And I bet if you was face down on cement, you'd be crying out for your mama too. But instead you go home while another black man is on the news, then turn around and say he deserved it cause his record ain't so clean. Meanwhile, we got white killers being set free, no consequence in sight, they just as bad, but you never hear about white on white crime, right? They commit the sins and blame us for the hype. Then they try to teach me that my Jesus is white. I don't think so. Talk about a savior complex and what's next? When you got white celebs taking mission trips to the motherland just to post to their fans, and they claim how seeing those kids touch their hearts. Meanwhile, they're trying to stop mine from pumping, killing us like it's nothing, avoiding repercussions. It's a bullet if we stand still, two bullets if we run, three bullets with our hands up. Hey, bro, I think I heard enough. Nah, I ain't done. You want to talk about struggles? Go to teach you a lesson. Class is in session. Even though our history, don't be in them books. They glorify white power while my people get overlooked. They claim to be the blueprint even though black culture got them hooked. But I get it. I do. Being a knockoff is hard. But being black is hard. Hard for who, me or you? Because hardship ain't nothing new to tell the truth. This my class, and from the looks of it, ain't nobody getting a pass. Ain't nobody safe. I'm addressing all this hate because we've been the most hated. I don't think you really witnessed how Haitians been alienated. We got people literally our same color shade throwing shade, not knowing that they greatness came from steps that we made. We still making waves in this country that was never made for us. They violated when they tried to deface us. And let's get something straight. Ain't no place to replace us. Our pride the liveest, our people the boldest, our rights the nicest, but this ain't the time nor the place to talk about it. Because it's about time I talked about this. Because if I hear all of them keep saying sac passe, my bullet kai coupe tech net, cause y'all don't get it. It's hard to crack a smile when we constantly be impressed. We always stressed. And they coming out our neck trying to figure out whether it's true we do voodoo. Respectfully, family yeah, talk. Nah, I ain't, man, I ain't stopping nothing. Matter of fact, now I'm pissed. On true six that six, I hit up my old lady in Haiti quick. Have your whole family finished. Banish like justice for brown skin. Innocent to everyone but the white men. So that's life in the pen. White juries got us serving over crimes we ain't commit. So when they see us, they see guilty without cause. Coercion for their laws, but we just victims to the system. We plead our case, but they don't listen. So don't tell me to calm down with my people behind bars. Cause if our skin was lighter, they'd be quick to drop the charge. No blacks allowed unless we shoved in cop cars. So that's PTSD when we hear sirens in our songs. They write up the statement and force us to go along. So now another black kid living with his freedom gone. gone. like our glory days ever since they intervened. No one knows whether they forced some war or keeping peace. Power and check and civil unrest is causing those who migrated over to the U.S. not to sleep. Our people in power steady corrupted by greed. So all the money being received is not being funded to those in need. Babies bleed, mothers weep. Body after body piling up the streets. See, that's all we got. That's our reality, but no one knows it. Extortion. That's right. We've been free for over 200 years and ain't got shit to show for it. Zoe's locked up in prison for life right now for cooking up the kilos of cocaine your president snorted. Bet you didn't know that one. I know. Our issues often never get reported. Often supported, but never supported. We come for a better life here, we get deported. Deported? How about stolen? My people don't, don't even belong, belong in this country. You want to talk about reality? Then talk about no it. No matter where we go, the eyes will see our skin first and our character second. But 
either way it goes, we will always be seen as a weapon. A threat to those who are ignorant to how it feels to be. A black man. A black woman. Stuck running a race with manipulated finish lines. So yes, I'm tired, but here's why. No matter where I go, I will always just be black in their eyes.
resemble the man in the mirror. Mm -hmm. On February 11, 2021, just eight short months after getting airmen high from giving chairman vibes, spitting views deemed as newsworthy, I received an anonymous message from somebody talking reckless saying, and among other things, I quote, I've been wanting to off your ass. Get bulletproof, nigga. And that he was coming to murk me. Damn. How would you feel if niggas wanted you killed? Cause me, my emotions reside somewhere in between fuck out of here, nigga, please, and repentance. Down on my knees like, Lord, please don't forsake me cause I ain't quite ready to leave. Yeah, I admit it, I've been conflicted cause it's something about things going left make you want to do right. Something about slipping in the darkness make you want to reach for the light. And if pride is the devil, he must be the DJ on sight cause he trying to entice me and this man to come out to the street and dance up under the pale moonlight. So now the soundtrack to my real life is beginning to give feels like that Phil Collins. I can feel it coming in the air tonight, and I swear I've had my feel of feeling like something's coming in the air tonight. Because I feel like this almost every night. Because this man just threatened my life. Picture me going out without a fight and imagine it's like you got all these aspirations and dreams you ain't scratched off your list yet. So you've been putting in mad work out here on the scene, just not starting to see a little bit of respect. Then along comes a hater who confuses a spark with a fire. He cyber stalks you to size and gets to look deep inside and sees the Messiah and forms a Judas complex. Well, hell, I guess if it's real after this, that means the shooters come next. Either way, real or fake, y'all about to look at me like, damn, I ain't noticed how you was gonna flex. Cause you get to watch me turn him coming after me into alchemy, magic trick. I ain't swipe nobody money. I wonder if I used to pipe this nigga honey. Magic stick. But on the flip, allow me to play devil's advocate and add that we can't ignore the fact that the government has been known to actively recruit and brainwash young thugs to use the tools to attack activists with. Y'all do know that's really been happening. Tragic shit. So I theorized that if homeless where the hatred is, his mind must be with the madness sits, cause nigga really do got me fucked up. But still. How would you feel if niggas wanted you killed? Has there ever been a real quote? I mean, we went from me having visions being brought into full view by that text message and thoughts that question for both to having y'all glued to y'all seats up in the audience getting blowed off some of the realest shit I ever wrote. And all this cause some fuck boy has the gall to pray and pray for my downfall. Pray and pray for my downfall. Pray and pray for my downfall? Damn. You really want to come get me? Picture me juxtaposed in between being ten toed down for my folk and having one of my own trying to come hit me. Sister having dreams I caught a slug and she don't even know about the text message that man sent me. It's getting weird. In the land of fake love, I promise I'm just trying to see my way clear. Got me looking up to God like, it's your will anyway. Why don't you go ahead, please, go ahead and steer. And if it's my time to go, let it be known. I ain't spit poems, I spit my ancestors' tears. But before all that, tell 321-355-6841. I've been outside waiting. And if you're really looking for me, you can find me right here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Okay. Damn. It's a madness
system. All right, so we have Michelle. Snap, snap for Michelle. Hold up, Michelle. Don't go nowhere. Just stay right there. Lonnie. Lainey. Lainey. You know, next round. Simba. Next round. Samuel and Jada. Next round. Uh, David. Next round. Put one, two. Next round. So, we're going to do this round. I didn't know, like I said, Simba said, look, y'all do three rounds. I don't even know. But Simba, y'all have to do a third round out of this. Only because I have nine poets, okay? So the first person that comes up, of course, is Miss Michelle. Give Michelle Woo! a little snap, snap. Give her a snap. Like, come on. Come on, Michelle. Let's go. Blood seed 
John attended because they never taught me how to handle my sexual assault in Bible study and I couldn't find a verse to help me find my inner peace afterwards and I don't know how to break it to him that my innocence has worn thin, that my rose of purity has wilted, but I still have a question because pastor used to always have all the answers I need to know. What happened to my rose when my precious petals are plucked without my permission? It's not my choice. When I didn't want to commit the sin, can I still be charged with the crime when I try to stop it? When I try to follow in the footsteps I know the Lord has laid out in front of me, but I am yanked from his pathway, am I still ruined? I was taught to be modest, to adorn myself in respectable apparel at all costs. First Timothy 2, 9, likewise, that women should always adorn themselves in respectable apparel. So pastor, teach me what to do for my apparel feels like it's being stripped from my body and my feeling of safety is no longer mine to possess and my voice is no longer mine to possess and I am no longer mine to possess but instead I am considered just an object. A tool only useful when being used to please him when this is the case I need to know if it still exists. Because I feel like I'm the one responsible and maybe that's why I can't heal. Because I'm looking at a wound that's been inflicted by somebody else but I've been told that it's my fault so do I deserve to be punished? Is my work diminished and I unfixable Pastor John fixed me. I remember when you told me prayer can mend all that is torn, but how can I pray when I saw him at church last Sunday? So tell me, how can that devil still walk into the house of God? Like, why ain't there no key? How is he still welcome here? Or maybe he broke in. Like he broke inside of my jeans. He broke inside of my temple. Scratch that, God's temple. First Corinthians 219, or do you not know that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit within you, for you are not your own. You were bought at a price, so God, now that he's allowed your temple to crumble and taken my self-worth apart brick by brick, stolen all of my precious jewels, leaving nothing but particles of dust that were somehow supposed to find a way to form themselves into a person again. God, come teach me how to build a temple from the ashes, Pastor. I think that maybe this is what you meant when you said a rose would be ruined if they were to be touched, so I guess in a way you were right can never be quite the same.
dog got my pocket. All right, all right. So send me on Jada. Let's get it. Oh, oh, hold up. Jada said, no, I'm not doing this one. I'm just letting Sam go. Right? Basically. She wants the money. Yeah. Oh, she said she, hold up. She, she said she don't want to share with you. She said she don't want to have the whole money. She want all of it. But you go ahead. Go Sam Hill.
sitting on my bathroom floor, mutilating my temple, thinking I could just slowly drift off. Things would be so simple. I wouldn't have to feel this constant pain on a loop like ripples. I thought I'd just take the selfish way out. See, the devil had a way of visiting my life, but God had a way of staying in my life, and I owe him nothing less than everything. He began to work on me and gave me the strength to work on myself. I was no longer drowning. I was no longer sulking, no longer crying, but I was eating. I was talking, I was smiling, I was becoming someone the depression could not conquer. And as the days went by and the blessings grew stronger, I became accustomed to the weight that had been lifted off my shoulders, so no, it is no longer heavy. And now, this joy that I have sticks to me like glue, constantly reminding me that God isn't going anywhere, and now I can stand here before you, willing to share my testimony that after everything I have been through, I can accomplish anything, and so can you. changing my name because I am not them. I'm changing it because I can't be. I have just enough books in the brain where I can save all the burning for the bridges that I won't ever cross again. Because I'm changing my damn name. Wipe away the debt, fill it up with mass, and give it a spleen, give it a spine, give it a heart that can jump on a string, not on a stool with a pair of D's etched into it. I was thinking of changing my name today because I'm starting to forget this one. I'm hoping it was something decent, perhaps glad it was just a long for the ride so when I visit the pencil pushing pigs, they'll rally in front of the damned cattle, blessing me for a grant in return, and it won't be sad to see me go, running away with the name of a man who finally isn't dead. Thank you. Good job, David. David, he's up representing she. He changed his damn name. Who changed it to, David? Huh? Who you gonna change it to? I don't know. You don't know? You just say you can change your name. Alright, alright, let's move on, let's move on. It's a 
Court. Look at you, you said I'm ready. You so ready. I'm ready to be ready. You ready to be ready. Let's go. Since you ready to be ready, snap her. Part one. I'm sorry. I said, 
Um, if y'all want to stay later on, he gonna play some music. If y'all have any music that he want to play, he will play it. If you're an artist, he will play it. And we just have a good time afterwards, right? Me going, just jam out, you know? When we leave, we leave, it's what it is, right? So, it, it, so I had to pick three people. And the three people that I pick, because like I said, I just wanna, okay, so. <laughs> Anyway, it was hard because all y'all was good. So snap, stop for everybody. Everybody was good. And this time, when you come up, before you say your stuff, please get your Instagram so people can follow you. Because we need to follow you, know what you're doing, how many, where you're going, because a lot of people want to know. You know, um, so that that's a good thing. You know, but if y'all want to follow me for these events that I have, it's Miss Caramel Lucas. On Instagram. Stop it. All right. All right. Like the candy. <laughs> so M S Caramel Lucas L U C A S. Please follow me. We have all a lot of events coming here. Um, we also trying to open up this to be like a Friday night club and some stuff so we can have a good time. Like I support these two, um, the owners here, the one that's right here in the blue. Nico and Nick, I support them. Um, they're business owned, and they say, "Come out, let's do some events." And I said, "Let's go." And that brother All right? can cook. Yeah. And that and brother, brother can cook. cook. That Jamaican can cook. He can cook. cook. He can cook. <laughs> yes, indeed, he can. Woo! All right, all right. Hello, hello. All right. So the three that I pick. That I love. Laney. Snap, snap. Port Wendy. Snap, snap. And Jada. So now, this is what I need y'all to do for me. This is what I need y'all to do. When they come up and they first they get their Instagram or wherever their social media is, and they start seeing their their spit, their lyrics, or however you say it, right? Please snap for the one that you really feel that hits your heart the most, so I know where the money can go. All right? Is that cool? Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah. And I want you to snap, snap real hard. All right? Your fingertips fall off. All right, so lady, you know you first. So you ready? All right, let's go.
maybe frappuccinos are more in season. I'll share some southern hospitality with you. If you really want a hot drink, just buy a cold brew and leave it in the sun. I bet you have something piping hot in a few hours, but I wouldn't recommend it. Cold drinks will become more palatable in the Florida heat. I mean, if you want to stay, it's time to assimilate. Come on, take off your coat. Don't you know it's too hot for it, Trayvon? Take off your hoodie. Don't you know you're too dark to live? Your blackness Woo! ain't bulletproof, and I know you hot. I know you feeling better than that. You can buy it down your neck. Take it off, black boy. You need to be smart. Be fast, quick-witted. Check your blackness in the baggage claim. Outrun the bullets. Cover your culture. Woo! If you want to survive, you need to change. You need to change. You need to change. And girl, you need to change into a bikini. I'm talking getting loser for going to clear water. Oh. Fair warning, lower expectations, the water is not clear. <laughs> but rather, it's polluted, murky, tainted like that black boy spirit, names misleading like the sunshine state after sundown, leaving black vibes scattered like UV rays. So don't forget your sunscreen. Remember, we're aiming for sunbathing, not sunburning. Take it all in while we're here. That sea breeze caressing our faces, the sound of the wood under our feet as we cross the boardwalk, dipping our toes into that salty sea. Cautiously, of course. Never so fall that I might fall in because, you know, black bodies tend to sink faster than they can swim. And I can't help but wonder how many of my ancestors' bodies fell in here, shark bait, gator bait, the delectable picnic, because what good is a Negro if not used for a home-cooked meal, Aunt Jemima, Mrs. Butterworth? I mean, what is a black woman if not a mammy, dark elbows, and big lips belong in the kitchen? She meant to be seen by her screen, so we never heard that her family ties are used as nooses, and I know you'll miss your family up north. Nothing can compare to Thanksgiving dinner surrounded by loved ones, sharing something so beautifully simple as a home-cooked meal, but I gotta tell you, ain't nothing like some southern food. I'm talking collard greens, cornbread, and some real mac and cheese. Oh. Oh.
mentioned that my passion equates to rage. I've been defined as a red flame with bitterness coursing through my veins. In other words, I'm a black woman. And if I utter anything louder than a whisper, I am categorized as a problem. See, no one wants to hear me speak my piece, but rather push me to the background. But sweetie, I don't spend hours looking like this just to be placed behind the shine of a man who claims that my voice is too aggressive. You see, I'm expressive, but they call it anger, impulsive behavior that's been conveniently attached to the assumption of who I am. I had gotten used to the eyes that couldn't seem to fathom this vivacious creation until they realized that liking a black woman is more than just a trend. Dealing with men who fell for my looks until I opened my mouth, subconsciously sacrificing my power just to be stepped on by someone screaming even louder than me, you see, if it isn't obvious, I've never been too keen on staying quiet. I've been told to stay in a woman's place and be compliant. You saw me and assumed I'd have an attitude based on my skin, but I promise, my charisma is bigger than anything between your legs. It's no wonder you got scared when an alpha walked in. I understand. I understand that my voice, I understand that my voice may intimidate the weak, even make a grown man get nervous when I speak, you see. He heard that the honey over here was kind of sweet, but if you can't handle my words, then I know you can't handle me, please. You never thought I was angry until I turned you down. I'm assuming that my attitude is the most action you've had in a while. However, your opinion of me was never my problem. I've been told that my excitement comes off as hostility, a charade, pushing away men with fake nobility, claiming to love what they see until they see me being myself. However, I will continue to speak my truth without worrying about the opinions of someone else, so yes. Yeah. Sometimes I get loud. And sometimes I'll walk into a room without cracking a smile. Therefore, I'm automatically treated as if my words are as harsh as a bullet. But one thing I am not is just another angry black woman.
You mean to tell me y'all still around here begging for butter biscuits and buck dancing? Hold on, you getting it twisted because uh, they don't love you. At best, they only love what you can do. In their eyes, your three fifths ain't shit. That's why they don't acknowledge the other two. To this day, I said, to this day, and it gets no wild. And a man willing to sell out his own people for the praise of an outsider. But what good is it to gain the world and lose your soul in the process? And what sense it make to pull that knife out my spine six inches and try to call that progress? Poets say, black lives matter. You say, what about the violence in your streets? Poets say, no justice, no peace. You say, protesting don't work. Y'all should just let it be. Poets say, boy, stop. Poets say, nigga, quit. Poets say, I'm going to play pop. You're going to play cameraman, partner. You about to catch this spit, Steven. Because I need to know the reason me activating my inner activist aggravates your inner demons. It's like, soon as I start speaking on freedom, your self-hate starts seeping. Out of your mouth, or better yet, out of your house, nigga. Well, zoom in, you're tuned in to Kuta Kente strolling on two goodwill. Going through the gate, running straight through the field in the back of your master's house, nigga. And you the type that'll ring the alarm and make wake your master like, I saw Kuta trying to sneak out the barn. Hurry up, boss. I think he's trying to escape our house, nigga. Plot twist. Everybody with skin like this been tight past the billet in the same wicked script. But look how that brainwashing got you. Back in the day, you probably wanted to invite Clinton to the cookout. Why? Because he tricked off on his wife and he smoked a little ganja, but you can't get it in your head to understand why we want justice for Brianna. Karma, justice for Atatiana, and justice for Sandra Bland, and justice for Oscar Grant, and justice for Rakia Boyd, and justice for George Floyd, and justice for Ahmaud, and justice for Rashad, and justice for Jacob Blake, and justice for Philando, and justice for Soleil. He was shot from in the opposite way by Orange County Sheriff's in South Orlando. Et cetera, et cetera. I should still have to explain why we want justice for Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, and Elijah McClain. Especially not for you. But I think it's probably hard for you to get a clear view from way down in the sunken place, so I'm going to bring you up to speed so you don't have to remain stuck in place. There's a generational shift that is occurring. You're now bear witness to the visual representation of the revolution that was placed in Gil Scott Heron's mind. And if you can't understand that, then perhaps it's best you stay inside. And you can watch it live from your living room couch. But what happens when revolution rolls into town and posts up right in front of your house? Woo! Nigga. You know, so what we're gonna do, 
I know, right? See, you see my decision, right? You see how I feel, right? He, he, he had his hands in the parts of my, he looked at me and said, oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. And I was like, I know, right? We were just going back and forth. We were just talking, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna snap real hard for the ones that you like the most. I know all of them was good, but we have to pick somebody. All right? Mingle. 